uh, basically promoting how great the EU was and all of that, geared specifically towards influencing people in the forthcoming referendum. And we made a complaint to the, uh, the Commission Office here in Dublin, but they said they were quite justified in doing that. We, we actually submitted a complaint to the Broadcasting Complaints Commission, who held our complaints on the grounds that it was political advertising. Now, we're hoping that the European Commission plans to do no more of this political advertising while this referendum is going on, because uh, it's bl a blatant interference, I think, in, in the, the decision of the Irish people. And Bertie O'Hearn and Dick Roach have for months now been saying, oh, we're going to be inundated with foreigners coming in here telling us how to vote. And um, well, I would agree with them, because that's what's happened in the past. At every referendum we've had so far, we've been inundated with foreigners. European commissioners, European heads of state, all of the bureaucrats in Europe coming here telling us how we have to vote to be good Europeans and not to let our European partners down, etc. The pressure has been coming on from extremely powerful people in Europe for, to try and persuade the Irish people to vote. And I think nothing will change already. We've heard that Bertie wants to bring over, um, I think it's Sarkozy and uh, Merkel. Merkel is coming very soon. And one of the commissioners, who's the commissioner? Uh, the agriculture. Oh, the agriculture commissioner is coming very soon. So, you know, it, it, <laughs> this is the kind of outside foreign interference we're going to have. And the other interesting thing, and I suppose it's come back to the issue of trying to portray this, the, the people coming in here. The Irish Times carried an article there a few months, a couple of months ago, uh, with on the front page article, you know, Le Pen to come to Ireland to campaign for a no vote. And I saw this on the front page, and I was like, my God, what's going on here, you know? And then you look at the article and you read down through you discover that the, an Irish Times journalist went to Le Pen and asked him, would you like, would you come to Ireland to campaign for a no vote? And a part of his response was, well, if I was asked, I'd consider it. But the, the kind of lengths that some of the media would go to to try and discredit the no side even before they can get off the ground. And apparently they've been back on, there's been a few articles where there's, you know, they've been contacting Le Pen to see when he's coming to Ireland. He probably might get an invitation from the Irish Times, but they look at it if no one else invites him. But that's the kind of thing that that's going on. They want to try and portray the no campaign, discredit them if at all possible, smear them if at all possible, and do everything in their power to actually undermine the no side rather than address the issues that we're fighting on. And while it's easy for them to make, to make claims about, oh, this is all about making Europe more efficient and more democratic, but that's not what it's about. And they're not willing to, so they make these statements, but they're not willing to stand there and defend them and say, why? this is going to make Europe more democratic, why it's going to make it more efficient. And that's what they should be fighting. I'm not trying to discredit the other side. And I think I better stop on that because I probably went over my time. But yeah, just two final things. And one is that um, it's very important that we get organized right around the country. There are all the different sort of organizations. I'm involved with the National Platform and with the People's Movement and with PANA and the No to the EU Constitution, the campaign against the EU Constitution. So if you want, you can find out the People's Movement are having some meetings around the country. You can log on to www people.ie and see where our um uh, what meetings are coming up and then you have the pana website which you can log on to as well and the campaign against the eu constitution website but yeah the the, the people's movement one is www.people.ie and we do have a meeting coming up in galway and i think one coming up in sligo and it's very important that as many people as possible get out and start pushing the issue and getting on local radios and trying to undermine the yes side for a change okay thank you <laughs> to thank Katie for organizing this and well done Katie for a successful information session that we had here. You managed to get a lot of people involved and a lot of questions were raised and I believe that today we show the, the EU that uh, you have to listen to the people. Unfortunately, we couldn't listen to everyone because there were so many questions. And uh, when we were discussing this uh, this meeting, the format of this meeting, we thought that if we allow um, half an hour of question time, we will not have enough questions. But next time when we have an information session, we have to make sure that we have uh, plenty of time to answer all the questions. Now, I've been working in um, campaigning for the last 15 years. Um, it's my profession that I do campaigns, I do public. When I was in Malta, I wasn't working for the Indom Group. I've done public relation campaigns in the private sector and both in the public sector. 
and, uh, and the Maltese referendum campaign. I was the leader of the no side. And uh, I know when you're doing a referendum campaign how tough it can be and uh, how the media treats you. Um, luckily, on a small island of 400,000 people, your voice is easily heard. Because even if you shout loud enough, everybody can hear you. Um, in Ireland, it's a different case. But I can relate a lot because I was here during the referendum cam campaign on the Nice Treaty. And I could see the difference between Nice 1 and Nice 2. Uh, in the Nice 1, when the people voted no, uh, in the second turn, when the Nice 2 came about, as soon as I arrived in Dublin Airport, from Dublin Airport to the centre, I realised that it was a lost battle. Because for every poster that the no side was putting up, there was 40, 50 posters from the S side. So when you compare the resources of the no side, you can never beat the EU money. It's taxpayers' money, but you can never beat that. So money-wise, it would be very difficult for the no side to combat that effect. But when you have a genuine argument um, and working in public relations, you need a lot of money when you need to sell something that you cannot sell. But when you have something that you don't need to advertise it, it sells. And you don't need to advertise it, because even word of mouth, and that's the best advertising you can have, it's word of mouth advertising. So when you talk to the people and you give them the arguments, and you believe in it because it's a genuine, genuine argument, then you win, the, you win that battle. But you need a lot of money to convince someone to drink something which tastes bad something that you need to eat which tastes awful, then you need a heavy campaign and you need a lot of money and a lot of billboards and advertising to make people buy that product. So the best thing we have here, and in Ireland you have, you have a special key, and that special key is in your hands, it's in the hands of the Irish people. And you have that key to protect democracy, not just in Ireland, but in the whole of Europe. And a lot of people will have their eyes, and especially France and Holland, where they had a referendum, and they voted no, and they ended up not having a referendum. They didn't have a second chance, like in Ireland, and it was very close in, uh, in Malta when we had the referendum on EU entry. I can tell you that 96%, 94% of the people went out to vote, and from, from that percentage, 48.6% voted no. It was a very close call. They were after us, so the Maltese vote was very important to be a yes vote. We had an entourage of people coming over and uh, telling us that if we don't join the EU, we'll be isolated, we will be Africanized, we will be, um, we have to pay for our sins and our mistakes. And we had, uh, at that time, the enlargement commissioner Verhoegen telling us that he would be very, very worried if he was Maltese and uh, he had children and uh, he, the people would vote no because he would be very afraid for his children in, a, in an isolated island in the middle of the Mediterranean. And we had Bertie Ahern come with his mistress telling, her, telling us uh, how good, how good uh, things when Ireland joined, you were so poor, and the EU was so good for you, and uh, now you all, you know, happy, living happily ever after. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we had the whole Barrow, not Barrow at the time, Pro, the, well, we had everyone coming down telling us, we have to vote yes. But if you intend to have a, a, a united campaign, you should put your political ideology aside and just concentrate on yes to democracy and no to a totalitarian state, and that's the most important thing. And all other issues you can fight on them on another day, but not on this referendum, which is so important to not just Ireland, but for the rest of Europe and for the future of democracy, if we all believe in democracy. And thank you, Cathy, for inviting us here. And, uh, I hope that you will be